everybody. Is that man still working on my stage? Hello there, sir. Are you doing video editing, by chance? How very bizarre. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you watching live around the world on Motorsport TV, it gives me great pleasure to introduce some very special guests who have an exciting product to talk about today. Not just a race car for the road, one that is now really, really bridging the gap between race technology and road car technology with an OEM partnership with Pirelli Tires. Can I welcome from the BAC Motor Company, Neil and Ian Briggs, and from Pirelli, Mario Isola. I forgot to tell you that you would need to bring some sort of sunglasses, because it's almost like being on a sunbed here, isn't it? It's very bright, isn't it? Uh, so, guys, so there's something very exciting uh, over on the Pirelli stand. You've uh, formed a, a new partnership to actually have proper tyres on a car, which, which, which is, uh, you know, you, you've, you've developed a really, really fast car. I'm led to believe that it's faster than a McLaren P1 around certain tracks. So, can we expect it to be going even faster now in the hands of humble people like me? I mean, certainly for the first time, um, mono will be available with a road, a dedicated race slick and a dedicated race wet. But um, I'd like to just mention earlier the reason we chose Pirelli, actually, because um, mono poses quite a challenge from a technical point of view. Uh, very lightweight car, very high cornering forces, and with recent regulations, there's a real challenge for the tyre manufacturer. Um, and obviously, at BAC, we try to be the best. We try to offer the best experience for our customers and the best technical driving dynamics, things like that. And of course, there was only one choice with our Formula Car influence um, and the work that Pirelli do. Um, we went to Pirelli to, de to develop a dedicated range of tyres for Mono. The, the, I think Top Gear magazine described the Mono as being about as practical as a pair of lead water wings. But uh, uh, it, 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 it must be a really, really special thing to drive. Is, is it really something that you know, someone like me can jump in and improve themselves? I think it's important to understand that um, we all drive vehicles that are the right tool for the right job, whether that's an SUV to take the kids to school, or whether it's a GT car, um, or whether it's a car that's just focused on uh, purely on driving performance and, and, and driving pleasure, which is what Mono is all about. Um, so to that end, um, the, the, the choice of, of, of working with Pirelli, as Ian said, was a, was a very straightforward one for us. And actually, two years ago, that, that process started right here at this show. Um, Ian and, uh, and our colleagues at Pirelli uh, had the first conversations. And then, of course, we sat down to work out a development program, which started about 18 months ago. And as Ian has mentioned, um, we've gone from uh, the previous tyre supplier, which is a single a single tyre, which had to work on the road and on the track and in the, in the wet and the dry, to now three individual tyre offerings, which means that we can focus specifically on the requirements of those individual tyres. So we, we've developed the Trofeo R um, road tyre predominantly. Of course, it's a high performance tyre that works very well on the road and also on the track. And then for our customers, we can then offer now a slick tyre which gives even greater performance obviously a, um, uh, an increased uh, footprint on, uh, on, on, on the tyre so we've got higher cornering forces, higher braking forces uh, improved traction so the lap time instantly is another 4 or 5 seconds quicker um, and then uh, from there of course um, we can offer the, 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 the wet tyre now um, which, is, which works fantastically well not just in a, in, in a wet torrential uh, situation but also in a drying track where it's this situation with would you fit a slick, would you fit a, a road tyre, it's very difficult. Um, and I think the other thing that we haven't actually mentioned previously is that all these three offerings are interchangeable. So the rolling uh, diameters of, the, of, the, of, the, of all three offerings, uh, they complement the pitch and the ride height of the car. Um, they don't change uh, the traction control algorithms, they don't change the speedometer, etc. So it's very easy for the customer to interchange between the Trofeo R to the slick and then the slick from the wet and vice versa without, without any, any major setup work. Um, so that's been the major, the major focus and that process has, has been an iterative development process for around 18 months and has involved um, a lot of track testing, uh, a lot of road testing, back-to-back -back testing. Um, and I have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with, uh, to work with Pirelli um, as, a, as a pure engineer, which is what I'm, my background is. Um, it's been fantastic to work with a mixture of their young and experienced engineers uh, to look at 
uh, I won't mention the number of iterations because this man who pays the bills uh, um, doesn't know. But um, we've, we've, it's not just about taking a Trofeo R um, tyre um, and, and a unique compound for mono. It, it's, all, it's been about a different construction, uh, a different compound, different sidewall stiffnesses, all the various different elements of a tyre that can be tuned um, as part of uh, Pirelli's individual, individualization process has happened with, that, with these tyres. And uh, it's a real compliment for someone uh, like Ian and I and our brand and everyone at BAC and our customers that Pirelli has been prepared to go to these lengths. Um, and, um, and I think the other big compliment as well to Pirelli is, is the, the agility that they've shown. Pirelli is a huge corporation, but the agility of their motorsport department it's clear that the, uh, the technology and, and the learning and the processes that they apply in motorsport have been applied to the tyres that we've developed. Well, maybe if we can bring Mario in here, because Mario, your first job at Pirelli was developing road car tyres, performance things. You've also worked as a tyre designer. What, what, what are the main challenges in designing a tyre to work with a really, really light road car? Yeah, I did it many, many years ago, so I forgot everything. No, I'm joking. <laughs> the technology moves on, doesn't it? <laughs> no, the biggest, uh, the, the biggest challenge was on the P0 Trophy or the road tire, because obviously the car is uh, a unique car that is very light. Uh, we need to produce a tire that is drivable, because uh, uh, our customers must enjoy driving the car, uh, but with some uh, targets that are imposed by the law, like the rolling resistance and so on where we cannot, uh, we need a very soft compound, but also to respect some other uh, technical challenges. And it's not very easy, but it was uh, great to work with them uh, because, uh, okay, we are flexible, but you are flexible as well, uh, a lot more than a big car manufacturer. So it was possible to develop a bespoke product in a very short time frame, and, uh, and the product is now available. The technology is there. We learn a lot from our motorsport activities every day, and we can use uh, this knowledge, this know-how in our road tire. So that, that's the perfect uh, um, link uh, between uh, race activities and uh, road tires. The slick tires is, is a different tire. is uh, made uh, with a target to have uh, the best performance. The wet tire is developed on the other side uh, to give uh, the best gripping wet condition, but as you said, also on a drying track that is not very easy when you have a, uh, a performance of a race car. Uh, the car is light, the grip is needed, the cornering speed uh, is huge. So all this is uh, making a package that on the technical side is not very easy to satisfy. I'm happy to know that uh, we, did, we did the right job. <laughs> so. Uh, Definitely. It's, it's good to have uh, hey, hey. now a car and the tires that are working very well together. And this is our perfect fit uh, uh, mission, I would say. Now, Ian, I, I suppose it's fair to say that BAC is, is in the great British tradition of inventiveness, a small manufacturer doing big things. What, what lessons are there for the wider road car industry in, in what you're doing, bringing race car technology to the road? I think... Um I think the, the, the agility that we show, I mean, we have, we have suppliers, Pirelli being one of them, and what we see is these big organizations, but it's the motorsport departments within those organizations that, sh that are really agile. So our, our, our best suppliers are, are those types of suppliers. And I think um, as, as big manufacturers produce more and more niche models, I think they're gonna have to start to see that, ne that, that agility and, and you see, um, departments springing up that can do more bespoke versions of cars and they, they, they form smaller business units within the big company. I think, I think that's where the future is going. Um, and that, with the disruptive technologies, agility is going to be the, the, main, the main point. And, uh, and Neil, presumably you, know, you, you must have a lot of repeat business um, with, with, with customers and enthusiasts. Who, who, are, who are your customers? Are they predominantly enthusiasts? I, I'm sort of not imagining they're the sort of people who buy a car like yours to pin it on the wall and polish it every now and again. So we, um, we export to 37 countries worldwide now, which is quite phenomenal for a, a, a company that's been uh, essentially building and delivering cars for only five years. Um, our customers are male, so we're still looking for our first female uh, customer out there. Um, yeah, they're predominantly male. Um, they're high net worth, they're entrepreneurs. Um, they've uh, developed and, and ran their own businesses. Of course, we have 
famous people in sport and music. Uh, we also have uh, kings, princes and collectors, as you mentioned. But predominantly, the vast majority, and the thing that ties everyone together um, is a love um, of driving. Uh, and all of our customers consider uh, driving as their hobby, as their sport, some race, as well as driving cars on the roads. Uh, most customers use their cars on the road and also on the track. Um, and they love to enjoy their cars. And, uh, and for us, um, one of the, the biggest challenges with the, with the tyre programme with Pirelli was to make sure that the tyres were very rounded in the way that they perform. So yes, it's about ultimate braking grip, cornering grip, uh, dry and wet performance, of course, and also meeting the technical regulations, but also how that contact patch communicates through the steering wheel through the suspension into the cockpit to the driver to give him the confidence to push to lean on the tires to slide the car um, and how the car gives up the grip but also how it regains the grip uh, and and we've managed with with the the tireless uh, efforts of, of Pirelli and ourselves to, to to achieve that in a very benign and a rounded way so that actually it entertains it doesn't frighten um, and that's um, that's something that's that's very close to our heart because mono is all about enjoyment and it's all about entertainment so most of our customers um, or the, every single customer gets out of the car with a huge smile on their face because they can't get this driving experience anywhere else. What sort of circuits have you been using in your testing process? Have you been travelling internationally to in, uh, engaging in different climates? So, yeah, it's a good question, actually, because um, with the car being exported to as many countries as it is, um, we have um, cars sold in places like Mexico, California, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, mainland Europe, the UK. So obviously the temperature variation in, in, in the conditions that the tyre has to perform ha had to be taken into consideration. Um, also things like acceptable wear rates compared to performance because obviously that's a, that's a balance. Um, predominantly we've used, uh, we can't give everyone too, uh, too many of our secrets of where we test, otherwise they wouldn't be secret test locations. But predominantly we use places like North Wales, uh, Mid Wales for our, uh, for our, road, our road work. Um, we've used the Anglesey track uh, an awful lot. There's lots of different configurations. It has a mixture of low speed, high speed corners, heavy braking, uh, very high traction dependent corners as well as high speed uh, corners. It has a very, very good mixture. Um, great topography in terms of the circuit as well, changes of direction. Um, so we predominantly use the Anglesey track uh, for the majority of our, of our test work. But in, um, in a couple of months' time, we're off to Sweden. Um, the, the tires will be, will be uh, rolled out to our various different, different markets. So it's, um, it's been a great journey. And, uh, and we hope that journey will continue with, with future, iter future iterations of, of tire development with Pirelli as well. You're faster than a McLaren P1 around Anglesey, aren't you? How, how much faster? I think it was about five seconds on road tires. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Now, guys, before, before I let you go back to enjoy the fabulous coffee at Pirelli, I, I have to annoy my co-host by asking a Formula One question of Mario, because uh, I'm afraid uh, Alan, Alan's not a huge F1 fan, and he says F1 tyres are a particular subject that makes him want to uh, throw a rope over the nearest rafter and hang himself, so we should make sure that none of that happens. Uh, Mario, how, how are we doing for tyres in, in Formula 1 in 2019? You're actually simplifying a subject that arguably has got a little bit too complicated and, and something that the, even the commentators spend hours and hours during a broadcast talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure they are going not to talk about tyres anymore, but uh, because they are, they are an important part of the performance of the car. The system to recognise that the tyres this year uh, is a lot better, it's a lot easier because we have only three colors, three names, and uh, that's good for spectators that are not fan of uh, technical details. So we will have uh, a hard, medium, and soft, uh, and we have white, yellow, and red uh, at each event. But obviously we cannot uh, race uh, in Monaco, in Silverstone, in Suzuka with the same compounds because otherwise we don't achieve the targets that are uh, in the target letter, in, uh, trying to improve the show and the overtaking in Formula 1. To do that, we need more compounds. Last year we had seven, probably a little bit too much. And uh, this year we decided to homologate only five compounds, and we call them uh, C1 to C5 in order to give also this additional information to fans that are instead interested in technical details. But uh, for the rest of the people, it's just uh, medium, the hardest, always. The soft, uh, the, 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 the yellow, is the, the, the one uh, in, the, in the middle, and the red is the softest one. So hard white, medium uh, yellow, soft red for all the events. 
I see no you're problem. on the medium compound uh, microphone. <laughs> I, yes, I have the. I'm wet, on the soft. The soft. Uh, and actually, I'm on the. I'm on the, the wet. wet. Ah, the yeah. wet and intermediate keep the same color. So, <laughs> the green is the intermediate, and the blue is the wet. Five colors, five uh, different tires for uh, Formula One races, and hopefully a lot easier to understand. I know we will have a, we will have a lot of questions about the real compounds we are using at each event, but we will give you the information so you can make. A, Comparison, analysis, uh, all that is still possible also with a simplified system. That's good. Fewer headaches for the fans. Sales of Neurofen are going to plummet this year. Well, guys, thank you very much. That's uh, <laughs> Neil and Ian Briggs from the BAC Motor Company, Mario Sola from Pirelli. Guys, thank you very thank much you. for joining thank us. You. Thanks for having us.